Hi folks, glad you've joined me again. I still have, not letting them go very easily because of there's such a wonderful dynamic between the two, Asher Entrata in Israel, David Damien, an Egyptian living in Canada. And we've been talking about, well, you need to go and have a look and see what we've been talking about. But I would like to now talk about something that I hear being bandied a lot around, which is the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the glory of the former house. And we're longing for that. But I, you know, are we waiting for a cloud to descend? Because that was the glory. David, are we waiting for a cloud? What are we waiting for? Go ahead, Asher. You're, uh, you're more exp exp experienced in that area. <laughs> well, uh, actually, it's pretty controversial. It has to do with the question of when we look in the end times, do we think there's a lot of people who see that everything's going to be all bad. And there's people that say everything is going to be all good. And I think our viewpoint is that it's, it's both of those together. There's going to be a lot of evil times. But in the midst of that, God will be doing something spiritually good. And we always quote Isaiah 60 for that. Kumi oreki va orech, that uh, arise and shine. For your light has come and there will be darkness over the nations. But God's glory will be upon you. And I just want to mention to that that that, of course, in the expression, the glory of the second house will be greater than the first. That's talking about the difference between David and Solomon's temple versus the restored temple of after uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and so on. But we take that as a, as a spiritual promise of things being uh, blessed greater. And we don't know how much that will be, but I do believe that there are promises of revival in the end times. I want to say again, we're not saying that there's going to be tribulation and persecution and difficulty and hardship. Yes. But in the midst of all that, God's grace will be there with us. We see that in the promise of Acts 2, when Peter quoted what was what happened in Pentecost. And he said in verse 17, he said, in the end times, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So we believe that's that's happening. But even more. As we look, and I think there's something deeply on uh, my heart and David's heart, as we join ourselves together, and you have part of this enhancing Jewish identity and, and Arab identity, we're coming into this, what Romans 11 describes as, a, as an olive tree, where you have everyone coming into one, giving up their identities, and yet enhancing one another's identities at the same time, drawing on the sap from Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and from one another, that something happens. And one of the things he says is this. Paul says this twice in Romans 11, verse 12 and verse 15. He said, "If when the Jewish people fell away, what happens when they come back? And he said, it will be greater riches. That's what, and greater riches. And then he also said, it'll be life from the dead. Well, what, what greater riches than what? The only riches you're talking about is what happened in Pentecost in the book of Acts. In other words, there's a promise there. So I say, what could be greater? No, I don't want to be, we're not saying something arrogant or fantasizing, but there's a promise there. If the, when, the, when Israel was destroyed and the gospel went out to the nations, and now you have people from all the nations coming back and then Israel's restored and the Messianic remnant, if we could cooperate, he's saying, look, Something better is going to happen. And despite all the opposition and persecution and tribulation, we are believing for something wonderful for to happen. Uh, and it comes out of these relationships because it's to us always love comes first and relationships comes first. When that happens, a great thing is going to happen. One more thing, and I know this is very deep on David's heart and my heart, is that when people can see us together, Westerners, Asians, Europeans, Africans, and also Jews and Arabs, when they see that, at, when they're coming together, there is something of a picture of the love of Yeshua, what that can do that is so powerful that I believe what Yeshua said, the whole world's going to know that, that uh, God sent me because they're going to see the oneness between you. And we just want to live out that oneness in love, unity of heart, and just reflect us giving up our lives for one another. 
Well, when we watch the two of you together so often in so many of the gatherings and even here, it becomes the longing of our hearts to be able to bridge these gaps. Nothing seems to be so important anymore. All the divisions just don't seem to be important anymore. David, I'd like to come to you now and just say, how do we prepare to be this banqueting table for others to see what you and Asha have? This, you've been talking about laying things down. How do you actually tangibly do something like that? How did you get to this place? Lauren, I'm just very touched by what Asher uh, was talking about, that there is a, a greater fulfillment of uh, the, the, uh, the one you man, uh, the Jew and the Gentile. And when uh, some people put eschatology in it, and I always say that we are living in the first fruits now. We are experiencing what uh, what was supposed in the reign and rule of Jesus Christ. But he reigns and rules over our hearts now. So he has access through us to a foretaste of what is to come. So I don't uh, uh, try to say, is this the full fulfillment? Is this partial fulfillment? But I know in my heart that uh, the Pentecost, what Asher was referring to, that was of Joel 2. That was not the fulfillment of Joel 2. That was the first fruit, the beginning. And as we go closer and closer to the uh, soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the biggest banquet and the biggest wedding in, in the history, that will be increasing. So we are going to see increased measures of fulfillment of Joel 2 in our day as we come into uh, the, the end of days. But, but Azure talks about something that's very important. The more we, and you were, asking about how do we prepare. The more we lay down, the more, uh, the more he is exalted. And that is, I think, the key for what is coming. Uh, I remember even Passover, the, 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 the last supper that Jesus had with the disciples. Knowing who he is, the Bible says in, in John chapter 13, knowing who he is, knowing all authority has been given unto him, he has come from the Father, Going back to the Father, knowing all that, loving his, loving this bunch of people, not perfect, loving them to the end, uh, uh, he rose up from the supper, took off his cloak, and he put apron, and he started and put water, and he started washing and drying their feet. Uh, I feel that it's the posture that the Lord wants to take us into, and He said, if I did that. My heart is to bring a basin, fill it with water, and put an apron and wash the feet of the nations and wash the feet of the Jewish people. I wanted that to be the heart of how do we come into the fulfillment of the end of days. And I feel in, in that, the more we know who we are and the more we get in touch with the heart of the Father, my heart for the Jewish people did not change because I want to be blessed. Actually, I reacted to that. Oh, bless Israel so you'll be blessed. I said, that's so selfish. I want to lay down my life. But I know the verse. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. But I don't want that to be my motive. I know when I marry my wife, I will uh, receive all what she has. But that's not my motive. My motive is I love my wife. I want to lay down my life. But that doesn't come to our human nature. So only the heart of God, only once we get in touch closely with the heart of God and feel his ache over his older son, his uh, the older brother, the old, all the Jewish people, that increased in my heart a longing. I want to fulfill your heart, Lord. I want to see Latin America saved. I want to see Africa saved. I want to see the people coming into the kingdom. But also, not only as a general way, I want to see your, uh, uh, the sons of uh, Isaac, I want to see the Jewish people being saved, to come into the veil being removed. So the heart of, my heart is, Lord, increase the number of the Gentiles, R bring us into that critical mass, bring us into that place where now the crack is going to happen 
for the Jewish people and the veil will be removed. My longing as, a, as a, an Egyptian uh, Christian at this time is to see the Gentiles coming into that place and stand before God and say, as in Joel chapter 2, spare your people, O God, spare them. Why among the nations they say, where is their God? And once we come into that, there is an increased uh, uh, manifestation of power, love, and increased manifestation of life in the body. I experienced it personally when I joined with Asher. My authority jumped and I, what is that? When Asher and I started walking together, I experienced levels I never experienced alone before. It's not that I did more, it's just in that union, in that union, there is power, there is a release. And I believe the Gentile church will come into that fulfillment once the veil is removed over the eyes of the Jewish people and they come into the kingdom. The, the heart of my father, the heavenly father, will be so glad that he will outpour and downpour and release life as we have never seen it before. And that's the longing of uh, Romans 11. And that's the longing of Isaiah 19 as a little part of Romans 11. We are the uh, Arab, the Egyptians and the Assyrians are part of the Gentile church and the Jewish people. So as we come into Isaiah 19 and Romans 11, we see there is something about that union between the Gentiles and the Jews that will bless the heart of the Father. Yeah, I just want to add something in on that real quick, Lauren, that, that mm -hmm. I, I, and I just sort of sense something of the Holy Spirit right now, that there's something going on in the hearts of the Jewish people right now. First of all, in the Messianic Jewish community, something's changing about how we're seeing Egyptians, how we're seeing Arabs, how we're seeing other, it's changing. I'm, 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 I'm even thinking that that as we're looking at the history of scriptures and realizing that that the whole family of Israel had to go and live in Egypt for 400 years and then come out, that Ishmael had to come first before Isaac, that that even Jesus, even Yeshua as a child, had to go down to Egypt. That was the hand, that was God's order, so that out of Egypt could be called my son. That there's something that we're realizing. Wait a minute. We can't be, this has to happen first. There is a, a, an order of God, of him moving, that it goes from Israel into Egypt to the Arab nations and then back to us, that it, it's something very deep that's happening with the, with, the, with the Messianic Jewish community in Israel that's growing more every day. And I think as we begin to see that, we have a destiny that is linked together with our Christian Arab brothers. And I think it's going to even happen to Israel as a nation, the whole nation. Something is going to begin to change that they're going to be, they're not gonna feel so afraid of the surrounding Arab nations and are gonna be, that there's gonna be more economy, trade. They're gonna, it's gonna see themselves as a blessing. The whole identity, there's gonna be a change of identity here that's gonna to lead to something's going to be explosive, just good and bad. But uh, this is the time that we, we really have to seek in here and say, what was God's heart in this? And and give it up. And last word, and, and of course, David said that already, that the heart of there is the heart of God to bless all of his children, to bless all of the nations. And for us to see bringing God's, all of his children, to him, he's the father of the family. And for all of us, and I know this is David's heart, that we feel it doesn't matter what the cultural objections is, people get angry with us, don't theological misunderstandings. That's not our heart. God is the heavenly father, he's the father of all. And we want to make his heart happy. His heart's been hurt. And we want to bring his children first back to him and to and to love one another. We we have a heart to see the father happy when he sees his children and his family coming together with him. And I, I want to respond to that, Ashton, and say, uh, uh, 
as an Egyptian and as a Gentile. Uh, I, I, I wanted to say to uh, your people, Israel, uh, we will never be complete without you. We cannot replace you, we cannot replace anyone. We cannot take the privilege of God and run away with it. It's actually the blessing is to give it to the nations. So we want to say to, from the Gentile church, from Egypt, from as an Egyptian, we will embrace and love and care for. I actually, it just came to me, I did this prophetic act when we got the Jewish people in the middle and we had all the nations surrounding them and say, and we said to the enemy, if you want to reach them, you have to go through us. And I, I, I know that's your part also for the nations, but I want to express that as a Gentile uh, to the Messianic family and to the Jewish people, the ones that have the veil and that have not received Messiah yet. Uh, may the Lord use us, our love, our humility, our brokenness to open your heart that there is a Messiah and there is someone that came and also I want to say to all those who are listening from the nations, Asher and I, our heart is really what Jesus did at the last supper. We want to bring a basin. We want to fill it with water. And we want, Asher and myself, we want to put an apron around our waist. And we want to go to nation by nation. Because we will never be complete without every color and tribe and nation and tongue. So not only the nations, the tribes, all the people that are in the uh, jungles in the forest, you're very precious. We want to take this basin and we want to take the water and the apron and we want to wash your feet and we want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. We want to see the, the heart of our father glad. Amen. I don't want to say too much now that everything that has been expressed is you've heard the Father's heart. And to all of you listening, I just want to say to you, there's a place at the table for you. Come home.